Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another video and welcome to my March wrap up. Today I'm going to be talking about all the books that I've read in the month of March. Before I get into talking about the books, um, I did just want to mention the fact that there were no videos last week. I haven't been very well, um, whether I've had coronavirus or the flu or whatever, I don't know. But I had a cough and bad muscle aches um, and sort of spent six days lying in bed listening to audiobooks. So yeah, it's been a slightly weird fortnight, but I'm definitely doing better now um, and on the mend. So hopefully videos will be back to normal. Anyway, onto the books that I read in March. I read a lot in the month of March. Um, somehow I managed to finish 20 books in March. Um, well, 17 books and three plays. I think in the first like three quarters of March, I was reading quite a lot because um, with stuff that's going on in the world I find reading a good like escape um, and a good thing to always calm me down and make me no longer feel stressed um, and then the last week of March when I was ill I got through quite a few audiobooks so out of the 20 things that I read in March six of them were books that I read for work like I work for a publisher so I do read some books for work but I have 14 things that I can talk to you about today um, some of the things I read this month were for the Irish Readathon which is hosted by Leanne from Leanne Rose, Elaine Howlin and Aoife from Fred Weasley Dies Laughing I'll link all their channels down below. So five of the things I'm going to talk about today were by Irish authors. Um, although actually two of the things I read for work happened to be by Irish authors, so I feel like I was participating even in my work reading, so there we go. So um, the first three things I want to talk about are the plays that I read in March. All of them were plays by Oscar Wilde, which I read for the Irish Readathon. Um, so I reread An Ideal Husband, which is one of his social comedies, which I really enjoyed. I have read this before, but not since I was 18. I really enjoyed The Ideal Husband. It follows um, various characters in sort of complicated social situations in the 19th century, including um, a married couple and what happens when the man is threatened by a secret from his partner past which might make his wife lose her respect for him. I really really enjoyed it, it was really nice to read it again. Then the other two Oscar Wilde plays I read were Salome and A Florentine Tragedy which I did not enjoy quite so much. Both of these are quite unlike everything by Oscar Wilde I've read before in that they're not set in the Victorian period, they're set um, much further back in time and they're also quite weird and they're not social comedies and to be honest I just didn't really enjoy them and they weren't really for me. Salome is quite weird um, and maybe if I'd have known the story around Salome I might have found it less weird um, but I didn't and so I just found it very odd. A Florentine tragedy I quite enjoyed but it's definitely like a fragment and there isn't very much of it. It's it's clear that it's unfinished and that had Oscar Wilde finished it it would have been fleshed out a lot more. Regardless it was nice to read some more Oscar Wilde this month and I definitely really enjoyed An Ideal Husband. On to some 20th century classics. Um, in March I also read Dubliners by James Joyce. This is a short story collection from the early 20th century and this was also for the Irish readathon. I didn't really love this very much. Interestingly, I didn't not love this for the reasons I thought I wasn't going to love it. I thought, having never read anything by James Joyce, that I would find his writing style a bit too stream of consciousness and modernist for me. However, I didn't. The writing style itself, I didn't have a problem with. However, I still didn't really enjoy the collection. I think just because the stories felt a bit nothing -y for me. I know a lot of people love James Joyce and I know a lot of people love Dubliners, but I read it a month ago and I only remember one story from the whole collection. I don't remember a single other story. They just really, really didn't stay with me at all. I found a lot of them sort of felt like they ended too soon or went on too long um, and I didn't get invested in what was going on and who the characters were. So yeah, just, just not really for me, I don't think. Um, I might try something longer by James Joyce in the future, but yes, I didn't really enjoy Dubliners. It wasn't really my cup of tea. The classic I enjoyed much more was Queen Lucia by E.F. Benson. So in my my TBR clear out TBR. Um, I mentioned that I have on my shelves um, Lucia in London by E.F. Benson and someone pointed out to me in the comments and said that was not the first book in the series. Um, so when I was ill I listened to the first book in the series on audiobook um, and it was really really good fun. It was actually a really nice audiobook to listen to while ill as well because it was like eight hours long. I listened to it in one day and it was 
quite like fun and cheerful and easy to follow which is really lovely so this is a novel from the 1920s it's set in a small country town um, and we follow this character called Lucia who is sort of like queen of her town she is the one who organizes all the social activities she is the one that everyone else of the sort of middle and upper classes in the town like look to to um, lead them in various things she is the one that keeps everyone entertained until another woman turns up who seems to threaten her crown um, and Lucia finds this very difficult to handle so it's a really really fun 1920s social comedy that I really really enjoyed. Then another 1920s audiobook earlier in the month Nick and I listened to The Big Four by Agatha Christie. This is another Poirot mystery in which Poirot um, sort of sets to unmask and discover the identities of the Big Four who are this sort of important big crime team threatening society. I did enjoy this one but I think it's definitely more of a sort of Sherlock Holmes adventure mystery rather than the Agatha Christie murder mysteries that I'm used to. Um, so I don't think I loved it as much as the other Poirot books that I've read, but it was still good fun, like Agatha Christie always is. And I very much enjoy the relationship between Poirot and Hastings, so that was fun as well. I also read some children's books this month. I read two novels by Diana Wynne-Jones, um, Charmed Life, and um, The Magicians of Caprona. These two are in the same series, so I feel like I should talk about them together, but also I read one right at the very beginning of March and one right at the very end of March. Um, the Magicians of Caprona was the only physical book I read while I was ill, so it feels like I read them very, very far apart because March has been a very long month, um, but there we go. So both of these books are part of the Crestomancy series and they're set in a sort of alternative version of our world, um, which is more historical in some ways um, and in which there is magic. So in Charmed Life we follow um, a young boy called Cat and his sister Gwendolyn. Gwendolyn is a witch and could do lots of magic but Cat can't. Um, but both Cat and Gwendolyn end up being sent away to live in the house of this man called Crestomancy who is good at magic and Gwendolyn and her desire for magic and power gets Cat into all sorts of scrapes. It's really really good fun. Diana Wynne Jones has a really like fun and witty writing style which I really really enjoyed. And then in The Magicians of Caprona it's set in the same world and Crestomancy turns up again. Um, but this is set in that world's version of Italy where there are lots of like warring Italian states. And we follow two young boys who are part of this magician family who are sort of in a long-term feud with another magician family. And what happens when bigger threats start to kind of threaten the city. It was really, really good fun. I just think Diana Wynne Jones is a really nice writer and has a really lovely writing style. Yeah, I really enjoyed both of these and I'm looking forward to reading on with the Crestomancy series. Moving on to some historical fiction. The other book that I read for the Irish Readathon was The Secret Scripture by Sebastian Barry. This follows two sort of different timelines in the present day we are in a um, psychiatric hospital where there is a woman who is just past 100. She has been there sort of 50 years or more. We are following a doctor who is sort of monitoring her and it seems to have come out that she has been placed there not due to any um, mental health issues but potentially she's been put there for political reasons um, and now that we are in the present day and things are changing and um, this doctor is trying to investigate whether or not she should be released. At the same time as we are following him and his re interactions with her in the present day we also get her sort of looking back over her life and how she ended up in this psychiatric hospital. I really really enjoyed this, it was a fantastic read, really engaging and very very moving and powerful and I feel like both narratives tie together in a really nice way so definitely would recommend this very much. Sebastian Barry is a great writer. Then I also read Dark Water by Elizabeth Lowry. This is another historical fiction novel and actually also one set in a psychiatric hospital. This follows a man who is a doctor, a psychologist, working in a psychiatric hospital in America in the 19th century. And it follows his career from his 20s into his sort of middle age. And it also follows his sort of odd friendship and relationship with a particular man called William Borden. Previous to working at this psychiatric hospital, our main character was a ship surgeon. And while on the ship, he encountered this man called William Borden. And William Borden, while on the ship seemed to kind of go mad and attack someone and sort of bit another man. And we follow what happens later down the line when William Borden is admitted to our narrator's hospital and how our narrator tries to kind of learn more about William Borden. It's a really really interesting novel for many reasons. In general the like history around it and the historical setting is fascinating and the way it looks at kind of how the 19th century perceived um, mental health is really really well done but also I'd say the relationship between our main character and Borden and kind of ideas of what does it mean to be mad or to be sane um, and 
the kind of complex moral issues that surround that are really really interesting and um, the narrator is a fascinating character and it takes you quite a while within the novel to fully understand him so this was definitely a really engaging and interesting read and yeah one i would highly recommend I also read The Thousand Autumns of Jacob de Zoa by David Mitchell. This is a novel set in late 18th century Japan and following um, various characters, both Japanese and Dutch, when the Dutch had kind of moved into a particular port in Japan to try and trade with Japan. And we follow a man called Jacob de Zoet, who is a clerk um, working in this area and what happens when he falls in love with a Japanese woman. And we follow her storyline as well. I found this really, really interesting. Like many David Mitchell books, I think there were sections in it that I enjoyed especially because he does tend to write books that are like quite clearly divided into parts that feel quite separate if that makes sense the bits that followed Rito rather than jacob were my favorite sections but i did really enjoy it overall i think the climax of the book and the kind of dramatic moments in the end sequence were really really clever as well so definitely really enjoyed this this is my fourth david mitchell book i think after cloud atlas um slate house and the bone clocks cloud atlas is still definitely my favorite and i don't think the three other books i've read by him quite live up to cloud atlas but this is definitely my second favorite after cloud atlas so yeah another one i would recommend then i also read the night circus by erin morgenstein this is another one that i listened to when i was ill and i did really enjoy this this is a novel that many people have heard of that was very popular a few years ago um which follows two young magicians who are forced by circumstance and by um, their tutors, basically, to have this very long-lasting jewel using as the venue for the jewel this clever, magical, moving circus that only opens at night. And everyone who goes to the circus thinks it's all tricks and illusions, and many of the people within the circus are using tricks and illusions, except there are some people within the circus who also truly have magic. And the book spans quite a long period of time and kind of moves about in time a bit as well. So I really enjoyed many things about The Night Circus. I think it's really, really good fun. It had like a really nice tone to it. And the magical elements were really cool. I thought the description was really lovely and the writing really good. I did find it really engaging. However, it was one of those books where as I was listening to it, I felt like it had all of the ingredients to be a five star read for me and it wasn't and I don't know why. I would kind of like to reread it again in the future in physical form. I think listening to an audiobook, especially while I was ill, didn't necessarily make for the best reading experience, especially because the audiobook so the person narrating the audiobook is Jim Dale. I didn't really love his voice acting. Like, the voice that he gave one of the main characters, Marco, I think meant that I didn't like Marco. And I think if I'd have read the book, I would have trusted Marco more. But somehow the voice Jim Dale gave him didn't make me warm to him. And also, the only place I've ever encountered Jim Dale's voice before is as the voiceover narrator from a TV program called Pushing Daisies, which is one of my favorite TV programs ever, which is very, very light and silly and flippant. And a bit over the top and melodramatic in a wonderful way and because Jim Dale is the narrator from that and that's where I know his voice from it meant that I don't think I took the story seriously in the night circus and it meant that it felt really light and flippant and I think it probably is quite light in tone always no matter who is reading it but I think Jim Dale's narration made me feel differently towards it than I would have done if I'd read it in physical form so I did really enjoy it but I feel like it might be a book that I need to physically read at some point um, in different circumstances to really appreciate it. But there we go. This month I also read After the End by Claire McIntosh. This was quite an interesting novel. I was sent this to review a while ago and, and finally got around to reading it in March. Um, and it follows two parents um, and what happens when they disagree about the correct course of action, the correct treatment to give their three-year-old son who um, has a brain tumour. Basically one of the parents feels that more treatment would be cruel and that palliative care is the correct thing for their son and the other parent feels that they should try all treatment possible um, to give their son a chance of life. And the book follows these two parents and the son and what happens next. There were some things about this book that I really really loved. I would say basically that I loved the first half a lot. I thought it was incredibly powerful. There were several moments that made me cry. It was really emotive and well done but also the exploration of the two characters and especially the sort of exploration of gender through that and the way different people treated um, the two parents because they were of different genders was really, really interesting and well done. But then halfway through the book, the kind of premise of it changes. I don't know how to explain it better than that and I can't tell you what 
happens without spoiling the book, I think. But from that point onwards, I didn't like it as much. And I don't think that it was the book I wanted it to be. Um, so I did still really enjoy it in many ways, but the second half slightly fell flat for me. So this was an interesting read and definitely not what I expected, but I think I was expecting to love it more than I did because it wasn't quite what I expected, if that makes sense. But anyway. Finally, I also read one fantasy novel in March and this was Royal Assassin by Robin Hobb. I was listening to this in audiobook through quite a lot of March and then I finished it off um, in during the last week when I was ill. Um, I really enjoyed this a lot. I thought it was fantastic. This is the second book in the Farsia trilogy. I read the first one last year. I really loved it um, and I loved the second one a lot. I can't talk too much about the plot because um, obviously it follows on from the last. But basically the series follows a boy who is the illegitimate son of of a royal prince within this world um, and therefore he is sort of part of the royal family but also not part of it and he ends up in the first book being trained to be an assassin and in the second book we follow all of the court and political intrigue going on as well as his relationship with all the people around him um, and I loved a lot of things about this book I think the magic system in this book and especially um, the particular magic that our main character has which means he can kind of like bond with animals I think is fantastically written and really really well done and the bits of the plot that use that were fantastic I love that section of the plot a lot I also love all the political intrigue another kind of court um, royal drama that goes on I think is fantastic there are some absolutely amazing characters in this novel who I just thought really really like flew off the page and felt so thoroughly real and the kind of complexities of everyone's relationships with wonderfully done as well. I loved it a lot, I thought it was fantastic and I'm really excited to read the next one in the series. I definitely think Robin Hobb is becoming a new favourite fantasy author of mine um, and yeah I'm just really really excited to read more work by her. I think it's a fantastic world with amazing characterization, great writing and yeah such interesting magic as well which I always enjoy. Those are all the books that I read in March, um, quite a lot. I'm surprised they got quite so much read especially when the last week was a bit of a write-off. Um, though I suppose I listened to lots of audiobooks but in terms of physical books it was a bit of a write-off. Do let me know down in the comments how you're all doing, what you're all reading. Let me know what your favourite book that you read in the month of March was. I think my favourite was probably Royal Assassin, um, though the secret scripture would be a close second as well. And yeah, thanks so much for watching and we're back very soon with another bookish video. Mm -hmm.